as we enter into the passion of our Lord, we come to this washing of the feet that we have proclaimed in our gospel today. And reflecting on our second reading as well from St. Paul to the Corinthians, we see this Last Supper as the institution of the Eucharist. So that is what we here as Catholics come to celebrate on Holy Thursday, Monday, Thursday. From the time that the Lord washed the feet of his apostles through the Last Supper up to and including the betrayal and the agony in the garden of Jesus Christ. This is an opportunity for us to delve deeper into that mystery of faith, deeper into that understanding of who God is and how he modeled for us through the person of Jesus Christ how we're called to act in our lives. Many times we go through life and don't reflect on Christ's passion. We, we reflect on the miracles. We reflect on the Beatitudes, the good things that happen. But how many times do we reflect on what he actually witnessed to us during this feast of the Passover? When he, knowing that Judas had been touched by Satan, knowing that he was going to betray him, knowing that he has already received those 30 pieces of silver, he offers to wash the feet of each and every one of his disciples. I know for myself, well, yeah, it's easy to wash the feet of those 11, right? Because you know that those 11, those are your friends. They're going to stick by you, although he calls out Peter, as we heard of in the gospel this last Sunday, of before the cock crows three times, they're going to betray me too and deny me three times. But he's still, knowing that they were sinners, knowing that they had that ability to sin, still wash the only part of them that wasn't cleansed. I don't know about you, but I'm not a foot person. The idea of washing feet is just, ah. And so when we wash feet every Holy Thursday, it's one of those like, please say they listen to the gospel and they wash the rest of their body and they wash their feet before they came to Mass. Please, Lord. But we follow that temptation many times. that We look at just what we're doing right in front of us, and we don't go any deeper into the meaning behind it. Yes, I'm going to wash your stinky and smelly feet. But why? Why do we do that? We do it because Christ shows us an imitation of humility. Through that act, through that taking off of his robe, the priest also takes off the chasuble at that time, that mantle of grace, and he lowers himself as Christ did to his knees. Now, you guys know I have bad knees and a bad back. So there's like, oh, help me down, oh, help me back up. And he knew what was about to happen. And so we then as priests and deacons, we follow that same path, trying to represent to the faithful, to those coming into the faith, the catechumens and the catechists, what it means for us to embrace the will of God. It's not all easy. It's not all neat. It's not all tidy. Sometimes you got to get down into the muck and into the mess and wash each other's feet. Now, I was watching my homily for this night earlier today, and I brought up last year that when I was in high school, we had had this brought before us as well, that in one of the classes we took at Bishop McGinnis Catholic Life and Culture, that our teacher challenged us to wash each other's feet. But it wasn't a we knew it was coming thing. It was a we got to class, went to the chapel, and all right, take your shoes and socks off. It's like, I just got out of P.E., um, this is not going to go well. <laughs> and I wasn't the only one. But it was showing to us that we are called to model that faith, not just when it's easy, not just when we're supposed to on Holy Thursday, but every day of our lives. That God is giving us opportunities time in and time out to, yes, physically sometimes wash each other's feet, but also how do we do so in a very spiritual way? How do we take care of those who may not be able to take care of themselves, or even those that can take care of themselves? How are we offering them charity? How are we offering them mercy? How are we being humble in the sight of God in the presence of our neighbors? And it's a challenge to us, I think, to kind of take deeply into this triduum, to these holy three days that the Lord and the church presents to us, beginning today, going through Good Friday tomorrow, and the culmination of the Easter Vigil and Easter Sunday, how do we be merciful with each other? 
How do we show each other humility? How do we show each other love? That sacrificial love that I talk about so often is what Christ was trying to show us when he washed the feet of his apostles. Because not only did he sacrifice by the actual work of washing feet, but he also sacrificed his own inclinations as a person, knowing that Judas would betray him, knowing that Peter would deny him. And he still goes that step above. How many times have we in life been offered that same opportunity and turned our back on it? Instead of embracing God's love, instead of sharing that sign of faith with each other, how many times have we instead chosen the, the route most traveled, not the route less traveled? Instead of embracing God's love and sharing God's love, we instead become selfish and say, I don't want to help them. I don't want to give to this person because they've hurt me, they've harmed me, or they won't take what I give to them for their betterment. We many times scrutinize every decision that we make and definitely scrutinize the decisions that everyone else around us makes. But the Lord knew what was going to happen. And despite that, lowered himself and served. That's because he told us time and time again, he came not to, to be served, but to serve. Growing up, we learned really early on the chore chart. Does anybody else have chore charts at home for the kids? We, from about the age of four, had chores, because that's about the age that we started getting an allowance. Now, when I say allowance, I mean like 1980s and 1990s allowance, not this $20 a week stuff that a lot of these kids get these days. We had to work for our $1.50 a week. That's because 25 cents a week went into our long-term savings, 25 cents a week went into the uh, collection, and we took home $1.50 a week, but only if you did your chores. Because to be a member of this family is to participate and to help out the rest of the family. Well, as a four-year-old, what can you do? Well, you can clean your room. You can do some small things. The older you got, the more chores you got. So you get to take out the trash and set the table, do the dishes and fold laundry. I never learned that one. Even when I went to college, I brought my laundry home so my mom could do my laundry. Went to seminary, I'd drive 700 miles home with a big thing of three loads of laundry. You know you're going to do it next year, Jake. Don't even try and say you aren't. But we all learned our place in the family. We all learned those different tools and skills. And some of them took and other ones didn't. We all learned different disciplines in our lives. And mainly we do them because if we don't do them, we don't get something. We do something to get something out of it. What's in it for me? But to the Lord, we do not because we receive, but because it is better to give than to receive. We hear that, and my mom today, we got her hooked up with something about a year and a half ago um, called StoryWorth, where once a week she's given a question that she answers, and then all of these answers will eventually be put into a book so that when she passes, we'll have all of these thoughts that she had. Well, this week's question was, what is your favorite thing about holidays? And so today she answered, my favorite part of holidays wasn't receiving gifts, but watching the kids open them. I know for parents, giving gifts many times to your kids is so much more joy-filling than getting a gift yourself. Because normally, once you get to a certain age as an adult, it's like, I don't need anything. Or you get to the point between husband and wife, it's like, what do you want for Christmas? I want a dishwasher. I want a vacuum cleaner. I want something that's practical that I need. I can remember a couple of years ago, the last year that my dad was around, He's like, what do you want for Christmas? I hate Christmas lists, but the rest of my family loves them. My Christmas list was my shopping list. I put deodorant. I put Listerine. I put toothpaste. I put underwear. I put socks. I put everything that was on my shopping list. And they said, really? Zyrtec? All right. So I got a yearly su year supply of Zyrtec. It's like, yes. And then I moved to Western Oklahoma and realized I'm going to need it. But how many times do we put into those want lists more than we put into those lists that we are called to give from. That's because many times we don't see how much God has blessed us. 
As we come to this Mass where we focus on that servanthood of Christ, we also focus on the Eucharist, the institution of the Eucharist that happened all those years ago. Tuesday night, we as the priests of the diocese, I think there were 87 of us that, that gathered together at the cathedral, had a retreat beforehand, and then we're there to be there for the Chrism Mass that we celebrate every year. But we also, before we bless the new oils to be used during the new year, we as priests renew our vows of priesthood. Are you still willing to do X, Y, and Z? Everybody around us says, yes, we do. I do. I am. I am. It's an opportunity for us to really re-engage why we became priests in the first place. And it has nothing to do with us, but it has to do with him and what happens on this altar. Because as a priest, I have one of the best blessings that I can ever be given and ever offer. The body of Christ. The ability to forgive sins. The ability to be with the sick as they're dying and offer them the sacraments of the anointing of the sick. The beauty of baptizing. The beauty of marrying. The beauty of burying. That those are ups and downs in all of our lives that many times we experience as humans once or twice. We as priests many times experience multiple times in a week. It's beautiful. We're going to celebrate baptisms on Saturday, confirmations on Saturday. Last Saturday we had the ordination of a deacon. Last night we had a convalidation, a wedding. We're going to have first communions this week. But we'll probably have anointings this week as well. And there will be people that are on both ends of the spectrum of life. But no matter where we are in that process... The Lord is calling us to look deeper. The Lord is calling us to grow in our faith, to not be stagnant. As a river never runs the same twice, you can't stand in the same place in the river because it's always flowing, so is the faith that God offers to us always flowing through our lives. So we experience it differently at different parts in our lives. I remember growing up, I hated Holy Thursday. Wait, I have to go to Mass how many times in a row? Didn't we go on Sunday? Do we really have to come back on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday? Our, our family was a little extremist. But we came on Thursday. It's like, okay, we're good. And I realized, all right, Mass is over. Time to go home and get that last meal in before Good Friday because we have to fast tomorrow and can't have meat. So I'd always get like, go to Brahms, get like a double cheeseburger with fries and didn't do it the right way, of course. But I'd always go and get super, super full. And of course, I was sick every Good Friday morning. I never knew why. But then my dad said, all right, are you ready to go back to church? It's like, it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm ready to go to bed. But he always had the tradition of ending his th Holy Thursday with adoration with the Lord. And so we had that opportunity this evening. At the end of Mass, there is no dismissal. We process out of the church to the altar of repose that is being held in the um, parish hall. Where we'll have the opportunity from the end of Mass until midnight to spend some time with the Lord, to really listen to those words that Christ said to us in that passion narrative that we read this last Sunday. Stay with me. Pray that you may not undergo the test. Stay with me. Remain here with me. Watch pray. The opportunity of silence with the Lord, to be there with the Lord in his agony, to allow him to be with us with whatever we're going on and have going on in our lives. Because each and every one of us that enters into this place enters in with our baggage and we leave with our baggage, but the Lord doesn't want us to be held down, doesn't want us to be held captive. Instead, he wants to take from us those things that are keeping us from embracing his love. He doesn't want us to be in pain. He wants to release us from that pain so that we can embrace him in love, so we can share that love. But we have to sometimes take that extra amount of time in our lives and just sit in stillness, sit in silence, and allow the Lord to be with us 
to offer us peace. Because that's what the world really needs today. It doesn't need another blog. It doesn't need another song. The world needs God. I need God. You need God. So when we take that time this evening, spend it in, in silence. Bring a book, bring a journal, bring your kids. They can fall asleep on the ground. Try and fall asleep on the ground. <laughs> but offer to them what the Lord is offering to us. Time of silence, time of reverence, time of peace. So as we go through this Mass, may we continue to embrace all that this evening offers to us. The model of servanthood. The Eucharist that is offered for each and every one of us and offered to each and every one of us. But also that peace that can only come from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.